I got to kind of ask the back end of this. So you said you go to bed. You have to watch when you go to bed. So what what is your what is your evening routine? I'm really curious because I, I think I think you're making a good important point that lots of great stuff happens in the middle, but you got to have a proper bookends to kind of make that stuff in the middle happen the way you want it to. So what's your what's your evening routine for that? The way that my brain tends to work is that if I consume information that I think is exciting, I, I want to work on it. So when I read, for example, I'll do so early in the morning. If I read at night, it'll keep me awake. So I, I'm trying to avoid activities that would stimulate me because that's the opposite of what I want. And so if I can find activities that are calming, that are peaceful, that are simple, and that will allow me to just go to bed, that works. So I might do a late night walk. I do those uh, pretty frequently. Um, recently in the winter months, I've been painting at night because like, I use paint by number. Like it's a really low key activity, not difficult, that just allows me to like veg out mentally for a few minutes, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and then I go to bed. It, it's just really saying there's gonna be, for the, the biggest part here is a stopping point for all of the electronic work, right? We turn off the electronics, you turn off the work assignments, you say like, I'm done for the day. Like I have a real finite, like lie in the sand to say this is finished. And then there is an intentional activity that you choose. It could be, you know, you read a novel, you paint a picture, you watch a TV show that's really simple, like whatever the thing is, it's gonna allow you to make that transition and acknowledge this is the end of my day now. And I'm making that intentional choice to go to bed early. And it has to be that intentional if you're the kind of person who just will watch late night TV until midnight. Like that, that habit is just a habit and you can break it and you can shift what you do. And once that's in place, all of a sudden 5 a.m. does not sound so evil anymore. Yeah, okay. All right, you're inspiring me. All right, I think I could do it. Uh, my wife has complained to me about me having my phone right next to my you know, bed, like right on my nightstand. Which because, I stopped doing years ago. My phone is usually kept in my office and I sleep, you know, other side of the house. I don't want my phone anywhere near me at night. And so if that's the case, there's, the distraction isn't there. Okay. I'm going to move it two feet further away from me and see if that... <laughs> Try 20 that. feet. You, you can't reach it. It's farther, you know, farther away. I said two feet and I heard this big, loud laughter from my wife in the other room. She, she's <laughs> like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, okay, so I want to move into our topic a little bit. So, you know, we're, here we are, still somewhat at the beginning of the year. Folks are thinking about goals and maybe they've set some goals and they've lost those goals or, um, um, or other challenges have popped up. But I still think it's time in the year, it's still early enough. I had somebody the other day say, Happy New Year to me. Um, so it st still kind of counts, right. like we're still, you know, we haven't gotten into March yet, quite yet. So w what are some ideas, you had a, a podcast early on where you talked about kind of the five must ask questions of goal achievement. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a direction we, you'd like to go in, but I'd be really curious to what guidance you could provide us right now in this time of the year on how we think about setting goals. 